Hello, ladies and a few good men, and welcome to this episode of the Autoimmune Rehab Podcast, where, as always, you can find and download show notes and listen to previous episodes at autoimmunerehab.com. Today, I am really excited to have a really amazing guest here with me, Afton Hassett, who is the author of a new book that I guess she'll tell us if it's actually been published yet or if it's still not quite coming out, called Chronic Pain Reset. So Afton, welcome to the show today. And why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about who you are and maybe a little bit about what caused you to start writing this book. Well, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Um, Gee, so what what made me do this book? Well, I am a researcher and have been a pain researcher for the last 20 years. And before that, I was a clinical psychologist who saw patients and um, really was fascinated by the study of chronic pain, working with people with chronic pain, and really identifying not just the vulnerabilities of what it's like to live with pain and, and what makes people worse, but I became so interested in the resilience in people with chronic pain and identifying the strengths and, um, and abilities of people with chronic pain to help them leverage those so they can lead a life that is richer and more interesting. <clears throat> so that really became the focus of my research is to look at really great new treatments and then also how to better harness people's um, kind of innate interests and innate um, strengths so that they could live more interesting lives. And so I've been um, conducting primarily research. I've done a a lot of grants looking at um, novel interventions in chronic pain. Uh, Much of my research is is funded by the National Institutes of Health. I'm an associate uh, professor and a uh, principal investigator at the Chronic Pain and Fatigue Research Center at the University of Michigan within the Department of Anesthesiology. So that's kind of my home base. Well, that's cool. So have you had chronic pain yourself then? And did that kind of sort of lead you to be interested in that? Or did you just kind of fall into that field? I absolutely fell into it. Um, I I did have family members with chronic pain. So it was certainly something that was on my radar, uh, but nothing I understood well. But when I was, um, I was about halfway through my doctoral program and I was working my externship at a uh, clinic and I was working with these amazing women who were making um, just wonderful strides in their psychotherapy. And then when we're in, you know, I, I was feeling very empowered as a, as a new, a new clinician. And then we would hit bumps and their chronic pain would become so much worse. And so these were women with autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis and lupus, but also fibromyalgia and chronic low back pain. And kind of across the board that the pain itself would really make the progress in therapy sometimes difficult or would actually supersede our ability to have sessions. And so I was so curious about this phenomenon. What is the relationship between stress, chronic pain, healing? And so I um, I was sent by to the UCSD Medical Library by my, my supervisor, uh, Dr. Martha Truax at the time. And she said, read all about pain, read about fibromyalgia, read about rheumatoid arthritis, read about psychological factors. And um, I was probably about three articles into my my study. And I was like, I'm hooked. This is so fascinating how the, the physiology, the biology and the psychology all work together to create the experience of pain. Yeah, that's awesome. That's cool. Yeah. And I guess it's it's all coming at it from a different aspect than I guess what I had ever considered either, because as a health and wellness coach and somebody who has an autoimmune disorder, who's had a decent amount of pain, who's even had a couple of surgeries and actually even did knee surgery last year. And I did not take any of the prescription drugs because I didn't want to get it into the drugs. So I went through, you know, pretty severe pain without taking any wow. of those drugs. I've typically focused more on, you know, the all the natural remedies that you can use for pain and, you know, some a little bit of things like meditation. And I've interviewed somebody who was a hypnos- hypnosis or hypnotherapist and all that kind of stuff. But I've never really delved into or ever really read any books by an actual psychologist about mm-hmm pain. And so when I saw your book, I was like, wow, that's super interesting. <laughs> I guess it you know, <laughs> focuses on a whole different aspect of pain yeah. and the mindset. And I guess it also never yeah. occurred to me that 
people who have chronic pain would hire an actual psychologist or <laughs> a psychologist to help them get through the pain. And so it presented yeah. to me a whole different aspect of helping to heal from pain that I had not really considered. So that's cool. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool that you did that. You know, and it's like, you know, we, we toil away in our own little silos and kind of understand what's before us. And it's so interesting because I love what you do too. And I feel like there's such an important place as kind of a part of this interdisciplinary care, you know, using alternative strategies. And I've worked very closely with a natural path, a woman named Susie Zick, who does a lot of her research in oncology and the use of herbs and natural healing processes, even in, in cancer populations. So yeah, so the psychology piece of it is, it's, it's less about that people with chronic pain need a psychologist to fix them. <laughs> Yeah, of course. It's, yeah. Not, <laughs> it's not that, and, and chronic pain is absolutely not a psychiatric disorder. That's one of the most important pieces. I work with a team, one of the one of the foremost research teams really in the world, um, of neuroscientists, physicians, physical therapists, nurses um, who study pain from every angle. And the behavioral side of it, the emotional side of it, the thought side of it, that's kind of where I come in. And also the resilience side of it, you know, again, tapping into what are our core strengths. But our neuroscience people tell us so much of what we need to know that pain is indeed in the brain. The pain is a process where the parts of the brain that process pain are different than those with people who don't have chronic pain. So the way that the brain is connected, the way that signals are interpreted are very different in people with chronic pain. The, in, in many cases where people have what we call nosoplastic pain, which is a pain that really is almost driven by the brain, that type of pain, um, the, the brain looks in, entirely different. And it's very obvious that when a single input, like a squeeze of a finger is processed in the brain as if it was a hammer to the finger, right? It's just the way that the brain is interpreting the signals. And you know, we think of it a little bit like um, when somebody has phantom limb pain and has lost you know, a limb, and we hear about people who have phantom limb pain say, my gosh, my leg is gone, but I have so much pain, it's incredible. And we know that is happening because it's a process in the brain. We can see that the brain is still representing that leg and oh, that leg hurts, <laughs> it's missing, it's been cut off. And the brain, there's just these remnants that are still processing and understanding this. And so it's just kind of a real example of how it is that the brain can create pain where really none should be there. And so we as psychologists, our job is to help people harness what they can so that we can help with really start to almost rewire some of these pathways so that by, end, by ed, adding in different pieces, we can start to influence how that pain signal is being um, processed and so that we can actually start dampening pain. That's awesome. That's cool. Yeah, it's definitely, I think, an up and coming field of research a lot more. It's like, I find a lot of people just think, oh, well, pills are the only real solution to long term chronic pain. And it's like, actually, they're the worst solution. Yeah. <laughs> they're really not, yeah. you know, that's really not what you want to be doing. And there's a lot of options that a lot of people aren't aware of. So let's move on to a little bit of discussion here about the subtitle. So I know it's the subtitle of the book is 30 days of activities, practices, and skills to help you thrive. So I love that because it sounds like it's very practical, straightforward. You know, I'm going to give you these actual tools to actually help you thrive with your chronic pain. What was the motivation, I guess, a little bit behind that and writing the book? Yeah. So we as researchers um, actually do a marvelous job finding things that work. And we, we call them evidence-based strategies. So anything that's like you know, that we've shown in research to work, what we're terrible at is getting it into people's hands. And actually, I just saw an article that was saying that it takes like 17 years to get something that you discover in a research environment to wide clinical practice, which is crazy. And so what I thought I would do is take these things that we know are evidence-based and just find a way to get it into people's hands. I had never really thought much about writing a book, but during the pandemic, I had a lecture time. So it's like, why not? Why not translate this amazing neuroscience and what we understand about everything about from pain processing to really how we process thoughts in the brain and in the body, how we process emotions, how we process trauma, how we process joy, how we process love and spirituality, and how these are all kind of brain events and how they all overlap, and how when you do things that 
decrease the stress responsivity, the, the more that we you know, overreact to stress and we, we decrease that stress response and increase just kind of our feeling of being comfortable and calm or joyful, we actually start altering how pain is processed. And so what I did then is I, I spent the, the, the first 15 chapters of the book kind of talking about the science behind some of these things from thoughts and emotions to things as diverse as as a purpose in life and, and awe. <laughs> and, um, and I try to set the stage how when you try these 30 days worth of activities, they might make sense. Because I ask our people to kind of suspend their doubt and the reader to try things that they normally would never do. And so the way this second part of the book works is there's 30 days and I challenge the reader that every day get up in the morning, read two pages. And, uh, and on those two pages is a, is a description of an evidence-based skill, strategy, practice, or technique that they can consider, read about. There's a description of how you can try today. So give it a try today. See if it's something you like. And then I direct them at the end of the day to come back and take stock. You know, what happened with trying that activity during the day? Did it seem like something they kind of liked? Did they actually find it worked? Uh, and or did they think it was just stupid <laughs> and to make a note about that and to do this every day for 30 days trying a different activity practice or technique everything from getting a little exercise walking to being in nature to mindful breathing to um you know gent gentle ways to pace yourself so that you don't induce pain flares to progressive muscle relaxation to finding joy to finding purpose i mean just gratitude, really, really diverse types of activities. And what I hope at the end of 30 days is that the reader has discovered maybe five, 10, maybe even 15 things that they think is, are kind of neat that they might actually want to integrate into their lives. And then the remainder of the book is then how do you do this? How do you do these things? Give them a fair try, like one at a time and see what works. What do you want to retain and make a habit? What do you think isn't that helpful or what has a good short lived help? Because sometimes if you're just working on sleep and your sleep is better, you don't need, need necessarily to keep working on sleep, right? You can kind of say, okay, I've got the sleep thing down. Now we're going to work on diaphragmatic breathing or we're going to work on finding a greater sense of purpose or I'm going to build, rebuild some of my relationships. And so that's, that's kind of the gist of it, that it's a 30 day intensive exploration. And then it's kind of maybe even a lifelong process of adding, trying and, um, and making habits, the things that work for you. That's awesome. I love it. Yeah, I'm just looking here at the table of contents of some of the different things and finding a bunch of different ones that you mentioned that that stand out, even things in here like reframing your negative thoughts, showing yourself compassion, different things like that. I think that's really awesome. You know, even things like music, um, mm -hmm. like you said, creating a relationship tree, practicing gratitude, all different kinds of things like that. Have you had any kind of research experience or walked any actual real life patients through doing all of these activities <laughs> and seeing what kind of results people had from those activities? Yeah. So, so all, like I said, these are all evidence-based and basically this is kind of what we do in cognitive behavioral therapy for pain is when we have a group of people, we have them over 12 weeks and every week we introduce a new activity practice or skill. We tell them about it. We tell you, go out and try it for the next week and then come back and talk to us. And that's basically what happens. So it's sort of what we're doing here. We're just doing it in a more compressed way. And then we're having people build them because that's what we do too at the end of cognitive behavioral therapy, the end of those 12 weeks of trying you know, 12 different skills. Then we put together, okay, the ones that work for you, let's make these part of your plan. And so this is just really a form of CBT, but what it does, it's a little bit different, is I borrow from many of the newer forms of behavioral therapy, like acceptance and commitment therapy, um, mindfulness-based stress reduction, dialectical behavioral therapy, and introduce just, you know, just skills that are from each of them that are evidence-based that I think, um, when put together can be incredibly powerful. So yes, these have all been shown to be evidence-based. Doing them in this 30-day way has not been done. This, 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 is a, this is a new in vivo type of experiment, but it's, all, it's based on what we do in therapy. Because the goal is that everybody doesn't have access to a pain psychologist. Everybody doesn't have access to an mm -hmm. academic medical center. It's like, hey guys, you kind of know what you like anyway, right? And, and we know this when working with patients that the treatment that works best for a patient is the one that they actually think might work, <laughs> that makes sense within their medical model, and that they're actually willing to do. 
Yeah, that's absolutely. That's great. I love that. It's like the coach in a box kind of in the form yes. of a book, I guess you could say. <laughs> so you could just yeah. dump your, you know, a lot of your knowledge and wisdom and the research that's been done and things and tell people, hey, go follow along with this book. And, you know, if somebody still, you know, makes it all the way through the book and still feels like they need help, then, you know, maybe they can reach out and get yeah. some more professional help. But this is at least a good yeah. start. And, and I so see this being used by coaches. And then the next book, as soon as I catch my breath, because this book was just released on the 5th of September, as soon as I catch my breath, I'm going to write a, um, a treatment manual. So for, for health coaches, clinicians, um, you, know, you know, even psychologists, social workers, um, physical therapists have all expressed a lot of interest in this too, to help them actually, so they'll have a manual. So the patient would have the book and then there's a, then there'll be a coaching manual so that you as a, as a health coach would actually have something that would suggest what you could do to kind of help them with each of these chapters and how to integrate the plan. I love that. That's great. That's awesome. That's really amazing. So you said the book just came out on September 5th. So I'm assuming yeah. it is available for people to get on like Amazon or are there other yeah. places that they can get it from. Where would you prefer that people go to get it? Well, you know, so um, I do have an author website. It's aptonhassett.com. So A-F-T-O-N-H-A-S-S-E-T-T.com. But the easiest probably is Amazon. <laughs> Chronic Pain Reset is the name of the book. Um, it's done very well. It's been one, two, and three in chronic pain off and on, it, you know, it kind of waxes and wanes. everything's very fast on Amazon moving, but people are finding it. And I'm just getting amazing feedback from clinicians and patients and um, yeah, just, just a whole mix of patient advocates. It's, it's, it's fascinating. I'm so glad that people are actually enjoying it. And, and I think that what I keep getting over and over again is the book is first funny, which everybody is shocked. How can, how can, <laughs> I'm going to book about chronic pain be funny. Yeah. Be funny. <laughs> and and it's, it's just me. Cause I'm just kind of silly and, and I um, see the world in kind of quirked ways, but I also have these beautiful stories from patients and some of these are quite amusing. Some of them are just mesmerizing. They're just kind of like two page reflections from 11 different patients with chronic pain or people who've suffered with chronic pain. And these lived experience vignettes are so powerful and sometimes funny and fascinating and, but yeah, so it's, I, I just have gotten great, great um, feedback and just some really lar lovely reviews. So we're, we're really excited. That's awesome. Yeah, I can definitely see that. I scanned through slash, you know, more or less read the book, but didn't actually start implementing any of the things because, you know, lucky enough at this point in time, I'm kind of beyond the stage of really having chronic pain, although I've yeah. been there, done that at some points in my life, but probably yeah. will go back through and like actually try out some of the activities because it seems really amazing. And it's definitely, like I said, very different from what you find when you try to research and find other books on chronic pain. Yeah. It's typically you're either, it's either maybe if you're lucky, it might be something more like the hypnosis slash meditation mm -hmm. mindfulness yeah. space, yeah. or, you know, it's like all about the drugs or it's all yeah. about the herbs and the food and that kind of thing, yeah. but not really, or all about having just one or two aspects, like just the gratitude aspect or whatever, but it's not yeah. nothing more concise and exactly like this with 30 days of activities and a wide variety of things to choose from. I love it. I think, I think it's a winner. <laughs> For sure. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I, I, I wanted it to also be fun because I think also the, the skills and practices that we will put in place are actually things that are kind of fun because I know if I've got a list of four things to do, I will do the most interesting, fun, <laughs> easy thing first. <laughs> Cleaning the closet or the garage always gets put off till whenever. So yeah, so the, the thought was that not just they're not just evidence-based skills, but many of them are actually really fun to do. And some of them are challenging, some of them are hard. So relationships are one of the most important things that we have in our lives to, to support us and our uh, and our uh, you know improve our resilience. And you know, and sometimes you know we need to take stock, and that's kind of one of the things people are invited to do. You, you mentioned the relationship tree, and then really building those relationships that are sustaining and important and beautiful to us. And so those, yeah, those are all, you know, the types of things that, you know, a, a reader could find here. That's awesome. That's great. So is there anything else that I didn't ask about the book or I guess anything else you want to share with anybody? Oh my goodness. Um, you know, I just, I, I, I am very excited for people to try these skills, but I think what's surprising is probably about five of the skills in there that are really for people with chronic pain only. 
the rest of the skills pertain to humans. <laughs> So, yep. because a lot of the, a lot of the skills that, that we talk about are just ways that we can um, dial back some of the problems we cause ourselves. Like there's, there's four different approaches to examining your thoughts and the thoughts that trip you up, you know, whether you're a ruminator or you're an anxious thinker, or you're, you know, very negativistic or too optimistic, <laughs> but, you know, just, you know, ways to kind of think about how we think. And then, you know, 80% of people in the U.S. have some insomnia at some point in their lives. And so, you know, having better sleep habits across the board, that's all important. And then prioritizing joy. I think we all get in a little bit of a rat race and tend to put off the things that we love the most in favor of things we have to do. This is certainly a process in chronic pain that you know, the, the things that you love to do just get relegated to the back because you have to do the bills and run the kids around and all the rest of it, um, go to work. But um, for all of us, we tend to maybe not take as good care of the self-compassion, the doing things that feed our souls, because really life is a marathon. You know, we need to kind of keep <laughs> feeding our souls so we have some joy in our lives because that, you know, it, it, it keeps us healthier. And it makes us more likely to be successful if we keep pieces of joy and rewarding activities in our life. That's awesome. I love that. No, you're totally right on. I mean, I can, like you said, I can easily see how a lot of these could be applicable to a lot of people. And yeah. think about it. Most of us end up with chronic pain at some point in our life, even if it's a temporary from an injury or something yeah. like that, you know, even people that yeah. don't struggle with it as an ongoing thing, end up having it at least at some point in your life and having these strategies available to say, okay, I may be temporarily having this chronic pain. So what can I do to ease myself through this rather than just right. swallowing a bunch of pills that are really not good for me? Yes. Oh, and I tell you, we see so much of this in our clinic where people come in on 10 medications. It's like, oh my gosh. how do you even know what's working and what's not working? The person comes in on 10 medications and uh, says, I'm still in pain. It's like, well, something is wrong here. <laughs> and, you know, and, and hopefully we can strip that away and, and come up with a, you know, a, a, a more sane approach that involves some natural healing practices, some breathing or, you know, kind of stress reduction practices and a, a more sane medical regimen. So, yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that's got to be a little bit challenging because you get that yeah. kind of a patient and you're like, well, okay, they're probably having a little bit of some addictive issues. We've got to involve yeah. their doctor or find a different doctor. Yeah. The regular doctor's not open to yeah. it. Yeah. See what to do so, to get them off some of those because, yeah, that's, that is crazy. <laughs> so true. And we and we do know that the, the most successful way to treat chronic pain is pretty much almost like any chronic illness, that you need to do it with a team. And the team is, you know, ideally a physician that's, you know, giving you a good, sane medical regimen, a physical therapist almost always to keep people moving and stretching and, you know, and safe and safe in their movement. And then, you know, some sometimes a behaviorist of some sort just to help with how do you cope with the stress of it? How do you adjust to having an illness? What are some tips and tricks that you can do so that you don't aggravate your pain or you don't make the illness worse? And then with any chronic illness, there's the piece that the patient needs to do. If you think about diabetes, there's monitoring and diet. You think about heart disease, again, same thing, diet, perhaps weight loss and exercise. For people with chronic pain, the more that they can do to, to do um, self-manage pain, the more successful the whole team is going to be. And so that this is just a lot of these self-management techniques too, to help people um, just be a really great active member of the team. That's awesome. That's great. So other than obviously purchasing the book and, you know, checking out your website, that kind of thing, if somebody has, I guess, say somebody goes through the program and has a testimonial they want to share, or they want to reach out yeah. to you in some way, what are, what would be the best way for somebody to get in touch with you? Oh, I'd love to hear from you. So you can email me at Afton at AftonHassett.com. I have an email there. Um, if you want to leave a review on Amazon or Barnes and Noble or Target, it's kind of all the places, you know, bam, there's a bunch of places where the book is. That's wonderful too. Um, yeah, that's just deeply appreciated. But I'm, I'm happy to, re to respond to questions. And, uh, and I'd love to hear people's experiences once I've done the 30 days. I've heard from several people already. And, and, you know, what I hear commonly is people have to take a couple of days and don't finish in 30 days. Let everybody know that's fine. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> fine. It is 30 days is not a deal breaker. And I say that in the book, but I think people feel kind of duty bound. And there's perfectionism is pretty common in chronic pain, too. That's kind of a, something I've observed. You can do it in 45 days. I don't care. Just <laughs> do it. Pace yourself. Take care of yourself. But, you know, but have the experience. Awesome. That's great. Okay. Well, any last words to share before we get done? I greatly appreciate your time. This has been really interesting. And yeah, I hope a lot of people will go check out the book and 
give Thanks. it a try because yeah, I definitely think it's unique in the space and definitely can really help people. So well, great. Well, thank you. Oh no, I'm just I'm just very happy to have been here and I really enjoyed our conversation and it was you know really really nice to uh, share these ideas with your audience. Awesome.